it's not a rise up situation. It is a there's a specific like set of laws that we need to enact at the state level that the federal government can't like legitimate like legitimately can't legally do by our own uh, constitution. The restrictions that we put on our government so they don't overreach right and stomp on the rights of the states or of individual citizens. They have yeah, the, so government good. We're all going to live off the government now. We're all going to pay into taxes and, tr and hope that it works when our government's shown to be psychotic, failure, fraud, liars. Please tell me. I'm asking you. Please, for the love of God, tell me. <laughs> I have no clue. All right, we're going to get another call from uh, the not groiper crazy caller. He would he prefer to be called crazy caller. Tries to justify the end of America. Hello. Hey, Hi. bud. I try to justify what's right, Sonzel. Yeah? Not the end of America, but... uh. Well, I, I'm. I was literally reading the the thing that you sent me, like the the messages that we have right there. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, so you just I've sent you all these messages in the last few days, and seemingly you just don't respond to any of them. You you hit me with a little cute message and reply saying, uh, "Oh, I uh, what you know." I'm not reading all that. Yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. yeah, it's a meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I am not reading all that. Sorry that happened to you, or I'm happy for you. Yeah. Or you remember the last time we like we we talked on a regular basis you would do the same thing and I told you I'm not going to sit here and go through every like schizo message and like talk to you all day long about like why I'm a fatso who orders Uber Eats or whatever right <laughs> Okay well you don't have to go there you don't have to go there so I'll just... <laughs> sorry sorry you know I yeah, just get fine. kind of upset I mean do you do you, re you read all the messages though I mean No I do not <laughs> So oh, okay. like, I'll read, I'll read like, uh, I'll say I'll read like a couple and then I'll be like, okay, there's like 40 messages after this one. I think I got the gist and then I'll go on with my day. Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. I'll get the gist well, so, and then I'll move on. Yeah. Okay. So I was really, the, really, I, uh, was curious about the first few I asked you about the political system making, you know, encouraging this hatred and division. And do you see the Mr. Beast video you watched? Yeah, oh, you know, shit. Mr. Beast. You know Beast, what? I, I actually haven't watched the Mr. Beast video. It was about housing, right? Yeah, yeah. It was just showcasing these million dollar, uh, hundreds of millions of dollar, 30 million, 100 million dollar houses where these people have car garages of tons of cars and they've got, it's just like f unbelievable wealth. I, I don't know how somebody justifies the U.S. as is and thinks that they're a moral. I mean, I guess you don't justify it as is, but I, I don't know how somebody can justify keeping it going and think that they're in the moral right. I well, mean, it's a well. Here's the thing about like the housing situation. It's about like understanding why things are the way they are for me. Um, the way that housing is in the United States is dog shit, right? And it's dog shit like that in a lot of Western nations. Like you're not even going to well, find. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even saying housing. I mean, the video was about these mansions. It was about these mega homes. Yeah, of I mean, who I, have it's more about wealth inequality to me than anything else. I mean, like these people live like they're literal gods amongst the people with mega mansions, with pool, like pools and like game rooms and everything else, movie home, movie theaters, and these houses are like unbelievable. And it's like, uh, there's no justification for this much wealth inequality, in my opinion. It is unbelievable. Well, it's a failure of government, but that's not the only way they failed. They failed so bad that you literally, the only way to reconcile this is to, you know what to do, Sonzel. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, so what do you think about no-knock warrants? Hold on, let me ask you that. Are you support no-knock warrants? Um, I, I'm like. Where the 80, government I'm, literally... I'm 80 to, yeah, I, I, I know. Like, I'm 80-20 on no-knock warrants. But like, really quick, before uh, I, we talk about no-knock warrants, let's talk about the, the housing thing, right? Like, there okay. are, there's like, actual like, significant issues with housing in the United States. But why is that, right? Like, I don't care if there are like, uh, you know, $100 million homes out there, a, a billion dollar homes. I don't care if those exist. What I care about is like, what is the access that the average person has to like quality housing, right? And by quality, I mean like you're not you're not getting black mold in your ceiling, right? You're not dying as a result of living there. It's not you know open to coyotes coming in, shit like that. Um, the reason why we have problems with housing in the United States is because people who own homes 
they vote against new homes being built because it lowers their property values. In the 50s and the 60s, back when America was actually a good place, um, housing wasn't looked at as an investment. It was looked at as a commodity, right? I, I talked about this earlier. The, um, the average family car and, and, and what way hold on i like this goes back to a fundamental assumption i disagree with that sure. nobody get in my opinion nobody's voting for anything real so can you explain to me how they're voting against new homes being built yeah this is mostly on the local level so um there's a and you can google this this is huge um there's a, a concept called being a nimby not in my backyard where there's a bunch of things that would be really good for society but would probably lower uh, property values. So people at the local level will vote against like new housing developments or new power, like nuclear power um, plants or something like that, that might lower their property value, um, even if it would greatly increase the quality of life. In of, what way? How do they vote against it? I'm just curious. Uh, because uh, a lot of times things like that will come up to a vote at at the local level, right? Like, do we want to um, move towards having nuclear power uh, for okay, the yeah, Dallas they vote, area? Okay, they vote in a way that makes financially the sense for them, but not necessarily for the poor, whatever class. And then, then they get screwed and then they can't have anything. Well, this isn't even like a bunch of rich people doing this. This is sure, like so they average cut their, middle cut class. Off them voting, cut off them voting in that regard. Then if it's going to, if it really is going to help, I mean, but you can't screw them and drag their property values down too much. But this is not the, not the problem, in my opinion. The people, there, there is now this gap like never seen before of people, people don't have houses because the rich are too rich and the poor are too poor. That's how it is. People are sleeping in tents. No, it's because have, it's not because the rich are too rich and the poor are too poor. It's because housing is becoming more expensive because we're not building enough housing. Because people don't want okay. to, people don't want to say, well, it's, yeah, it's let's hard build. To build housing. No, it's, it's actually it's, super easy, but we we've created we've created a system right that makes it hard uh, through zoning laws and shit like that, right? Like this right here um, is actually a problem of uh, too many restrictions on capitalism. Where in the past it would be way easier, way um, way less like legal restrictions to building housing, uh, way fewer restrictions on uh, some of like the dumber. Um, uh, like code uh, things like, you know, what kind of pipes you have so in your what, house. So you're chalking this up to reg government regulation or something being uh, the problem? Uh, yeah, unironically in this regard, I'll take the conservative route and I'll say like, yeah, there are some regulations on housing and like where you can build housing and also the like nimbyism that goes on in a lot of like suburbia that destroy our ability to build enough housing to um, reduce the cost in the market. That is... Like, uh, I, I don't even know if this is even argued in like economic circles. I think that socialists, I think that capitalists, I think that everybody agrees. Like the answer to reducing housing costs and like making sure that more people have access to, um, you know, affordable, high quality housing is uh, is just building more homes. But we have uh, we have so many restrictions on why. Uh, we don't have that, uh, or why, or sorry, I'm also playing a game and I'm irritated by it. Uh, this, guy, this guy said, can I just address this guy said, rich people aren't why I'm homeless. I'm not saying it's rich people. I'm blaming the government, of course, uh, because it's partly government and it's partly like middle-class people in, um, uh, in suburbia who don't want to allow for anything but single family dwellings in their like subdivisions. Right. Because if we have like duplexes, triplexes, small apartment blocks, they like have it, all sorts of different kinds of housing. I mean, it's suburbia is just one place. Like uh, right, but suburbia, like suburbs, have restrictions on like having apartment blocks in a suburb or having you know duplexes in a suburb. But th maybe they probably should. You don't think so? I mean, no, I don't. I don't think that that's a a, a reasonable thing. I think that it, like making making cities more dense or um like the, there's two things that we should do we should simultaneously make cities more dense right so like houston houston texas where i live is uh like the greater houston area is the same square mileage or bigger than the state of connecticut because we're so spread out because there's so many subdivisions and um like a lack of 
uh, apartments being found in like these spread out areas, right? If we were to able to like condense or to build up and build uh, more housing, right? While also, and I think this is a, a key thing, um, making living in like rural areas more uh, economically feasible. So like uh, make it to where businesses can actually function outside of large cities. Um, that that's like the, the two things that we need to do for that. Like there are answers to this that, uh, we need to do, but like getting there is convincing people to go against their own individual, um, financial interests a lot of the time. And that's really yeah, well, hard to I overcome. Think that there probably are other ways to solve it besides getting people to go against their personal financial interests, but I mean, I mean I without the, the point of a gun, in, without the point of a the gun, yeah. Will, well, but again, like I, I would, wealth, like I would 100% agree with you. Like, oh, if the rich people, if they're doing this, but it's not like it, this isn't exclusive to rich people. This is a um, like even lower middle class also people. There's too many this. people for. There's also too many people and not enough houses. I mean, yeah, I just, just address that though. We just need to build way more houses, and the restrictions on building houses well, or is cut the down on the people. Uh, well, I don't think that we need to cut down on the people. We don't have too many people on Earth. Okay, well, you're saying that you you just said that there was two. There was either it's either there's not enough houses, or there's and you just said it was like just as clear cut as that. Like, oh, we just need to build more houses. No, we could also reduce the people. Just saying, like, unless you're you fine have, with like, you, uh, unless you're fine you with like the mass, that. the mass murder of like all people who have been unfortunate enough to be homeless or um like uh, you know something like that or to call the population by like forcibly sterilizing some people like i we're not going to reduce the human population right like i, I well, don't know, how do you know they already are you don't know they already basically are in my opinion but whatever you know <laughs> i i don't i, mean, I don't like, you could if, argue that they already are but i, I would be it very is, very uh, keen to see any evidence on that, and I would super, super, uh, you know, say that that was a bad thing. But I don't think well, that maybe that's they're happening. doing it intentionally or otherwise. But well, how would you, you know? Our birth rate's going down like crazy, right? You're aware yeah, of because, that, right? Because people, as nations um, industrialize, as they become more advanced, they people generally have fewer kids. Well, it's in some countries. I don't know if that's no, it, everywhere. It's before, literally but. every single place on earth. Like even in, um, I think Nigeria has the, uh, it is like one of the I, places. I don't that, know if I chalk that up to just industrialization either. And it's just as simple it's the, as that. I well, mean, industrialization and like higher education and like generally people having a higher quality of life and not needing to have a bunch of kids, um, access to having some sorts of, uh, contraceptives so they don't accidentally have an oops baby. Um, like those are things that we're looking at, but that all ties into industrialism or industrialized states and, uh, you know, people becoming more educated and stuff like that. People just like tend to have fewer kids and we can see this in you, trends you like across consider... all of Europe. Uh, and we're even seeing, seeing it start to happen in Africa. Like Nigeria had a huge, uh, population boom and it's still pretty, I think it's like three or 4.5 for every couple. Um, but they are uh, they're sloping off as things get uh, more economically uh, prosperous and as uh, things become more stable and people are having um, better quality of life. Uh, the birth rate is dropping there as well. OK, yes, birth rates are dropping. I know how it, it's all going, Sansel, but I mean, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be that way. But moreover, you also have to consider we've got upwards of between 60 million and 80 million illegal people who have come here from Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Venezuela and other places. So I think that also maybe you could argue contributes to uh, the overpopulation, not enough houses, not enough people. People don't have anywhere to live. The house prices get jacked up. And then I, I mean, the like situation. It I, I think that it would be better to Plus have, the government never solves anything. I mean, go ahead though. I mean, the government does solve things, but the, the thing is like it, having more immigration it, it is not like mutually exclusive to building more housing, right? The problem is more, we need more housing, right? Because there's obvious uh, economic benefits to having immigrants, or, despite or what you what might about think. Less? Okay. Uh-huh. Sure. Sure. I mean, there's even a, the, the there's also the scholars land. that you would cite would say the exact same thing. 
There's also land uh, your res- limitations, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I was saying. The zoning laws. Okay, but I mean, you can't have. Uh, you build houses, you destroy the environment. You can't have houses everywhere in the whole thing. And right, which is why I said that make, we should make population like large it population. Make financial sense for some no, people it makes live it, in a lot of places. Right, which is why I'm saying if people want to move to cities, we should make the the housing more dense, right? More people in a smaller land area, right? Because it would be less econ- or uh, environmentally impactful. It would be better economically because people wouldn't have to, you know, travel. You know, like I think that in Houston, the average, uh, like, commute to work is like thirty to forty five minutes because everything it takes forever to get across Houston. Like it's just ridiculous. Um, and if we condensed the city somewhat, what, going and, from suburbia to the city, something. Uh, okay, even going from like the city to the city is it, just like Houston is really, really spread out. It's it's ridiculous. Like it's actually like Houston is just like um a, a microcosm of like all the problems with city planning. Like we've just like spread out and have so much urban sprawl. It's uh our ability to um to have uh reasonable um what do you call it public transportation or to have commutes from suburbia to uh the city to work. Like it, it's really really ridiculous here. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, your suggestion is to do whatever, it, but it, the I don't suggestion know is to uh, build more houses. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's one way I guess you could approach it. But I didn't call in really to talk about that. I mean, you know, yeah. I called in. You know, the whole point of me saying that was the wealth and equality aspect. Well, wealth you, and you equality do doesn't. That- um, I this is this is the distinction we need to make: income inequality and wealth inequality. I don't necessarily have too much of a problem. It can lead to some really bad outcomes, but wealth inequality and income inequality are like the okay, biggest. Yeah, things. so it doesn't really need to be distinguished that much. But yes, people obviously some people have a disproportionate wealth and income inequality, and it's just unbelievably insane now. Well, I think it's that like, most it, people would be. I think that income inequality is what leads to there being. Um, uh, massive like unrest in a civilization. Like there, there are places for people to live. They just can't afford them. Yeah, because there's not enough housing being built. You know, like supply and demand. No, no, no yes, because they don't have enough money to build uh, to go live there. They don't have enough money to go live there because the housing yeah, cost is too high. Because seven trillion is. No, Sanzel, you, d- dude, you're not even aware of how bad the income inequality and things like that, things like this are, man. I'm pretty you sure know, I know more about this much, than you do because you don't even know you, about you know, the supply and demand aspect of housing. The, su- the supply and demand aspect? D- dude, there's enough. I don't, know how, I don't know how many houses there are in the U.S., but I feel like there are plenty of them. I feel like the issue people have is that they can't attain them because they don't have enough money. But there are, they are there. Well, technically, uh, yes, could... there's enough housing in the United States for everyone. But the problem is where people want to live is different from where those houses are. There's a lot of abandoned houses that you can get for like absolutely, unbelievably dirt cheap, um, like in the middle of nowhere, right? Like there, you can. There's Instagram those pages are that run add... down normally. No, they're, they're not even run down. run down. No, no, like they're like cool old Victorian houses. There's like entire pages on Instagram uh, dedicated to um, advertising, so people will f- buy them. But you you can get like a uh, two or three story Victorian house in the like uh, like in New York, right? Not in New York City, but like in up uh, upstate New York for like a hundred thousand dollars, and that would be like an expensive. Victorian house that you can find on these pages, right? Like eighty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, just because there's no demand in those towns because there's no economic um, like incentive to move there, right? Like they they don't have like a bunch of jobs for people to move there and like work because they're small towns and businesses open up in places where there's more I mean, people to it, work. It can't be too over regulated that it doesn't make financial sense if there was a market for it for people to go and. Does that make sense to you for people to go in and actually build, I guess, smaller houses uh, wherever the, the, there needs to be them? I mean, in the cities or wherever else. Right, there, I mean, I don't think you're going to put them. No, you're right. You're right. Land available, right? That doesn't. You don't have to put them right next to suburbia or whatever. 
Well, I, I think no, you like you would have to build in either suburbia, right, which in in a lot of places is like kind of intertwined with different urban areas, right? It's not like uh, Houston is just like a city and then like you drive 45 minutes out and that's all suburbia. Like there's different areas that are more clumped up um, urban centers. So suburbia is kind of interspersed in a lot of cities with like the urban area. But like the the problem is that in suburbia or even in cities, there's going to be regulations that kind of restrict on how what kinds of houses you can build in suburbia, where you can build inside of the city. Like these are like the the big problems, right? And some of these regulations are absolutely reasonable, right? Like in New York, you don't want to just like uh, green light every single housing development and like reduce all the restrictions because, you know, you have to also keep in mind that there's a subway system that runs beneath all these places. And if you up or if you build a place that's going to up the subway, then that's going to lead to bad things elsewhere like there's there's like a lot of reasonable restrictions but there's some unreasonable ones and in there was, suburbia there was just a flood okay, there was ahead. just a flood in new york oh, i'll just add to that there was just a flood in new york i don't know if you saw that but there's oh, like yeah. these, there's like these apartments under yeah the, the basement apartments yeah 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 people get trapped down there imagine that that's a yeah, no, that's, yeah and that's a that's a problem with um urbanization as well because there's nowhere for the water to go so you have to like continually update where the drainage goes but that's like a that's a separate thing that's less of a restriction thing and more of a we have to update our infrastructure as you know as more infrastructure is built because otherwise we're just going to flood houston had that problem too but um but yeah like it like the problem is there are enough houses in the united states for everyone but it's in places that are either undesirable because there's no jobs there there's no um, there's no people there. There's nothing to do there, right? Like upstate New York, it's a bunch of rural places that have a lot of houses that you can buy. You know, Pennsylvania, there's a bunch of uh, towns that are dead just because the industry there dried up and there's no jobs. Um, and so if you move there, then you're going to have to live basically like a hermit because there's, you know, there's n nothing happening in these tiny ass little towns. Um, so like the the best path forward would be to one, build more houses, build more densely populated houses where it's not just like one family to like an entire lot in a suburb, right? You can build small apartment buildings or you could build, um, you Dude, know, you like know, duplexes. What are you about one family to suburbs are, suburbs are built very efficiently, I feel. No, they're Did the you? opposite. They are, there's like, I think that there's a general rule of suburbs that they will never, ever, ever make back the money on investment um, that's put on there just on the roads, not even on the housing, but on the roads, because the the amount of concrete and labor put into that, uh, the economic um, productivity that happens on that road will never uh, meet the uh, the amount of money put in. Okay, I see. The roads are an economic loss, or whatever, according to you. Yeah, just I mean, the like are... even even ignoring like the the housing, right? Like the the roads it's, themselves. It's not very much road in a suburb, though, There's because all the houses of... are yeah. stacked right next to each other. I mean, you can't. How do you get more? It's not like they're spaced how do you get more out. E how do you like get more economic activity? Of... You like intersperse businesses uh, between houses. You build more, um, like more densely packed housing. Again, like duplexes, right? Where you can fit two families I don't even on a lot. Where, where do you even get what you're saying to actually? Do you want me to give you, you actual like? Is there like a video? link that says suburb roads are a net loss on? Yeah, look up a guy. Like let me make sure. What what? It's um something gecko, echo gecko. Echo so gecko. what is his exact claim? I mean, it, yeah, it's exactly what I said. The the fact that you invest so much just into the development of a specific suburb, right? Because there's no economic activity happening inside the suburb after those houses are built. Um, the, there is, there's plenty. There's you, what you economic really happens, what economic activity happens inside of People someone's house. People deliver stuff. There's mail that comes in. That's not what we mean by economic activity. The economic okay, yes, activity. There's no businesses being set up. Yeah, unless exactly. you have a home business. Right, exactly. And the sure, economic sure. activity that happens under, you know, with like delivery, like Amazon, that's happening outside of that suburb because the transaction is happening outside of that suburb. Oh, okay. That's the argument, huh? Okay. Well, that's the reality of the They're bringing situation. it into the suburb, driving on the roads that were built like uh, 
they're all stacked yeah, right next to each so, other. I, I, just like, don't, I don't know I what you know what investment thing. is or like taking out loans to to build a an area is but like you have an interest rate and you have more money that you have to pay back on top of the initial investment right and so in order to meet that investment or or to break even or to exceed that you're going to have to in like continually either build out more suburbs which is just going to lead to a giant debt trap so you're you're like against suburbs or something? Yeah, I'm suburbs hearing... are actually the bane of like culture. Suburbs are the bane of um like I don't think that they should be abolished necessarily, but like they shouldn't be the go-to place where people build their wealth. We need to um like drastically rethink how we deal with suburbs. In the past they were um like this thing that we could do and it's like, "Oh, we're getting out of the city and the hustle bustle." of everyday Are you just life parodying but... a video? is this just some video you're parroting or is this like you're authentic you came up with this opinion um i'm not an economist i'm taking the combined uh opinions of a bunch of econ people that i've both talked to and read and watched this is like a, a pretty popular opinion amongst people who are economists right now that suburbs are bad absolutely destructive to every single um like aspect of life Jesus. Yeah. Those, those people are psychopaths. Well, watch the videos and see if you can find a, okay, a maybe, an maybe actual counter watch. argument. I don't know. That seems the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. Those, I thought so. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. I did think so bad. at first, too. How, how right? retarded can you be? Yeah, oh, so I, can used I use it, that word. Yeah, it's fine. I say <laughs> it too. Sorry, okay. Um, but like, I, yeah, I also think that it's, um, uh, it was, I also thought that it was really stupid but after like uh listening to the first video and saying that seems like it's a uh, a little outrageous it might seem a little alarmist but then like after like seeing that there's a huge amount of people who are economists that say the exact same thing um either in part or in whole like it seems like this is just like the fact okay i'll have to look it up and hear, listen to their arguments but i mean that's just bizarre i mean uh suburbs are the issue do you, do you want to now go into the wealth inequality aspect? I mean, we can talk about anything you want, buddy. I'm chilling. Okay, let's just, let's just, I just want to mention, apparently I've been reading in the Cayman Islands. I don't, I don't even know where the Cayman Islands actually are, but are you aware that like these... nearish Cuba and like the Caribbean? I'm not a thousand percent sure. Don't quote me on that. Are, are you aware of what goes on there? Yeah. They, there's like um, places where people can hide their wealth so it doesn't get taxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you know? Do you know how much wealth they're saying? Or, or it's probably in? yeah. It's probably like an unconscionable amount. I agree. Like this is something that um like needs to change. But also, I don't know how we change it personally. Uh okay. That is that is just. I agree with you on this. Uh, yeah, I I agree. It's unacceptable, and something needs to be done about it. But like, I also don't know what can be done about it. Um, because I just don't know enough about the subject, and I also think that it's um, a really difficult, uh, like you just legal tax issue. The fuck out of, you just right, tax but they, the but all the, but the money is all in in the Cayman Islands. So how do you tax money that's not in your own country? How do you enforce that? That's the problem. Like, how do you enforce something that's not even happening in your own country? Do you go to that other country and uh, and? destroy their sovereignty and then like uh forcibly seize all of the money that's in the bank accounts there like that's a really really difficult question that i don't know if there's a a, a good answer to right now yeah i know you've got to be monitoring those people and like, like uh but like monitoring them and knowing that they're doing it is one thing but like how do you make it stop happening i don't know what the answer is and i think that there have been attempts by um certain members of congress both republican and democrat to try and uh find a solution that wouldn't be um either illegal from the united states like constitution or um you know feasible on enforcement in the rest of the well, world I mean, how do they tax people i don't know how they do go about doing this but there's got to be a way i mean how do they tax people that are outside the country like it doesn't make sense like uh well they if you lived you, in you anywhere don't. else how would they do it they must have a way to do it yeah, you well you don't collect taxes on people who don't have taxable income in the united states so are these people living in the cayman islands no but they have bank accounts set up there Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's got to be ways to handle offshore bank. American-owned offshore bank accounts have to be 
monitored and like uh yeah it's yeah I, I think like one of the other issues is the fact that like if we if we do um do that then it's going to disincentivize any businesses from open like especially like larger businesses from opening up um or continuing to have their headquarters here where we can tax their like their like hit them with the corporate tax or something like that um because if they register in another country like Ireland is really notorious for this for being a tax haven where they have like a 0% corporate tax rate so a lot of um like i think um apple i think made no i google i think is in the us but like uh facebook and um yeah like places like that have all of their headquarters in Ireland because they don't get taxed at all and because they're technically um corporatized in you write some law that if you have an offshore bank account with an amount over a certain amount then you, in, in you're an american citizen you, we're gonna f you that's a, like not complicated i feel it it is complicated but like i don't know enough about the intricacies to like say like i'll just agree with you on this like this is actually something that does need to be done um but i Obama I, was saying Obama was saying Trump had an offshore or he, Trump had a Chinese bank account. Did you hear that? And he said, yep, that's he true. said if he had if Obama said if he had a Chinese bank account, Fox News would call him Beijing Barry. Those are his exact words. <laughs> that's funny. I miss Obama. He was good with those uh, zingers, as they called him back I, I in 2012. Yeah, now we live in a dystopia. I've said to bring Obama back, but I understand you're a big constitutionalist. But I, I don't know any I don't know enough about the offshore bank accounts. I just read that today and I couldn't believe it. Uh apparently yeah, it was like a couple seven of trillion scandals. Dollars. Yeah, there's been a couple of scandals with like uh, celebrities like Emma Watson and like all these like movie stars that had um I think it was the Panama Papers where like they all Are they had just dodging taxes? Yeah, essentially. That was like the whole scandal behind it. They were dodging taxes. So how much are they dodging? I mean, a lot, evidently. It's at I least enough for a, them to a, justify uh, putting bank accounts in another country. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. Oh, like, this is gosh. an actual problem that needs to be uh, fixed, but I don't have a good answer to it. I don't know if anyone else has, like, an actually good answer that would be, uh, that wouldn't affect some other aspect of our lives, you know? You would, you would, th I wish the stupid Democrats, they're so obsessed with power and money and wealth, and you think that these guys are the good guys. It's so sick. They could. Why don't they make it so poor people don't pay tax? They could do that very easily. Wait, say it again. Poor people, poor people don't have to file tax. Most most uh, poor people don't even file tax anyway. But I I think that the the tax system needs to change pretty significantly. Um, and I think that the um the way that we should go about doing things is along the lines of that, uh, you know, those countries that you said have had better civilizations than us, right? Like the Nordic model, but like, you probably wouldn't like the tax rate that they have. But, uh, I think that, um, I, I think that when it comes to like wealth, I don't think that people actually care that much. What they see is people who have the ability to just like buy whatever the they want. It's that so, income so, part, right? How much is, let's Google it. Let's look it up. How much is Elon Elon Musk value. Let's see. You you agree there's never been wealth well, he bought it. like this. Uh, I mean, has I, I there think, ever been? I think proportionally, I think the last time human uh the human species was at this level of wealth inequality was under the Egyptian pharaohs, is something that I've heard before. I don't know if that's actually true. But it's it's bad. It's, it's 240 bad. Like, billion. So what so think like do you do you realize that like it makes people not want to participate at all, in my opinion. No, I don't think that. I think there's, that... A, there's about a million things in America that make you not want to participate at all. That's why people are just checking out of the society, not having families, giving up on life, committing suicide, etc. But yeah, yeah I, of course. I, I, if you I don't start, think that if it's you're... the political system that's doing that. I think that it's... It is. It is. I think it's the... I think that there's like... I think that there's a couple, like maybe five, but I would say probably three... Um, off the top of my head, uh, things that we could do to drastically improve um, the quality of life in America without like becoming a socialist hellhole, without becoming like an authoritarian hellhole, um, that would like greatly improve the quality of life of people. Number one, I think okay, that we so should you have. Say... Oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was, uh, yeah. 
I, I just think that like um, if we were to have some kind of like uh, government guaranteed healthcare, I think if we were to have um, left some, is fantasy. It's ahead, not. It's not a fantasy because, because we can, you think that we're going to get these things from the government, man. We can't get one no, thing that even works from these criminal people. These people are. Okay, obs- without monologuing, let me finish the. Are the things, psychotic, okay? but okay, go ahead. I, I think that the government should provide some um, some level of health care to everyone, right? At like no cost up front. I think that that would be probably one of the biggest things that we could do. I think that um, the government providing, um, you know, subsidies Wait, for so free health care. I don't know. What does that even mean? That's just OK. Go ahead. Continue. It means Sorry. that if you if you are sick, then you can, you know, it means that if you're sick, then you can like go to the doctor and not worry about like paying no cost up front. Why don't you just say are you basically saying free health care? I don't even know what the hell that actually means. But OK, I don't want to hear all of them. So, yeah, the the no cost up front would mean like you're you're paying for it through your taxes right everybody's contributing because... okay so basically free health care yeah okay go okay continue okay so um i would say that um something has to be done at the um federal and local levels about housing to reduce the cost of living of housing and i think that something needs to be done about um uh about like the, the general like economic position so like jobs right have some way to have people training for jobs that are higher paying or um, or something along those lines. There's lots of different ways that we can increase people's incomes without ourselves uh, economically. But that's something that's like, uh, those are like three really big things that if we were able to achieve those three things in my what lifetime. Jobs? What are you talking about? Do you mean like more education? It, it might come down to education. It might come down to like jobs training, like, um, like subsidizing the hell out of... Um, like blue collar jobs or like even not requiring um not requiring a four year degree for uh simple coding jobs, right? And like subsidizing the hell out of jobs training on that. Like there's a lot of different things that we can do in terms of jobs training that would help with the current day and age that we're in that's not just construction. Um so yeah, like Okay, well yeah. we could we could talk more about that, but uh, like all those things I, I would wanna, be really I want good you to things. understand I want you to understand, Sansel. No, those are all leftist fantasy, pipe dream, never going to happen. You, like, it, it there is are right wing, where... right wing hyper capitalists that say that even then, even them being hyper capitalists, they support the hell out of those things because they're do, just no, so you, good. Are you aware of how bad the the numbers are for the United States? Fine, in a, as like. Their financial situation is very, very, very. Wait, uh, you mean cram- like individuals, right? Not like the government. No, the, no, the government and individuals, but the government. Our government's especially. fine. No, dude, we are like bankrupted. We are not bankrupted at all. What Sonsal, are you talking about? Uh, okay, I, I think uh, without causing some sort of drastic. Uh, first of all, the healthcare thing is just impossible because we're losing. We pour out billions of dollars in interest like 60 billion or even more than that maybe i i, I know think it's something all of along the lines of like two are... trillion dollars of interest to the federal government but most of that's owed to ourselves what, what are you and also... about yearly yeah that yeah our budget is seven million five million is, or i'm sorry seven trillion and then five trillion is on spending and then two trillion is on um paying back interest but that's where fine. Where would we get the where would we get the 10 trillion that you're talking about for the free healthcare? Can the 10 trillion mind, you, number you, is on, only for say? the most extreme version of universal healthcare possible. But I don't support the most extreme version of healthcare possible uh, universal healthcare possible. Right? That's the Bernie Sanders, right? That that number is just like false even on that um like 10 trillion dollars it's not 10 trillion dollars how, how much do you plan on raising taxes on people? Can I just say I would I just raise say? taxes on people significantly. Yeah, but on on who? On everyone. Okay, that's really that's six. The way that people in like Scandinavia and like Sweden's tax system, right? They have the so government good. We're all going to live off the government now. We're all going to pay into taxes and and hope that it works. When our government's shown to be psychotic, failure, fraud, liars, I'm sure that uh, if I'm sure if I pay in, I'm going to get good health care. If I pay into my, rather I keep my well, money we can and see make examples. my own health decisions. We can see examples I've of governments for actually doing this. We can see examples of governments actually doing this effectively. So if other governments can do it, we're the best country yeah. in the entire oh, world. We're the that's strongest. That's not how it works. 
What do you no, mean? That's other, not how it works. Other governments can dig a – no, Santo, just because other countries can do it doesn't mean we can do it. It means that we can take yeah, no, what. Yeah, well, hold on. Let me let me be like super clear. We can take what they've done, and then we can modify it to work in our country. Absolutely. No. That's, yeah. No, why? It, what works in one country does not work in another. But then can I why, just say? Then, wait, hold on. Th that's just not true because half of these countries that have like universal healthcare systems modeled their healthcare systems off of other governments nearby them. Uh, it, they might work relative. Sanzo, do you think we're anything like? Norway or any of those countries? Finland no. or Sweden? Why is that? Okay. Because we haven't invested our uh, our tax dollars in the same way as they have, even though we're wealthier. There's, uh, there's like a million reasons. I mean, there's cultural and then there's um, like economic differences, right? If I'm talking about like the economic differences, that's what the difference is. They have, uh, they have allocated their tax dollars so, so, can, I just say, can i just say this one thing nothing we cannot even get one single thing to work in this country and we absolutely think, what do you mean you, our military say, is the strongest I, and that is the that works uh, absolutely our financial system our military absolutely numbers works. are degrading our military what, what do you working? mean our military numbers are degrading by what metric we're there is not enough we don't even meet recruitment we're recruiting shortfall because people are just checking out of the country it's all collapsing people are giving up on it can i just say though i don't think that that's is, how we should like judge whether our military is the strongest most effective fighting force in the entire world that doesn't mean that we're failing it just means that we need to got, find a way to increase recruitment sonzo you genuinely believe the U.S. government as is capable and is producing good things in our country? How how naive can you be? Those man? are those are I two different questions. On one, I would say yes. On the other, I would say no. Are we capable of it? Yes, we are capable, right? But we have to find common ground and come together and actually like put aside the retarded partisan bullshit uh, for things that we all know is actually economically more feasible uh, would be better for the citizens right and I think that the largest stumbling block in the way of that is the Republican Party who absolutely do things that are economically damaging to like individual like poor people rather than things that would be better for um, no, you know they, the they greater just have good a different approach people. on they, no they, they, they don't even have, have no they don't have an approach okay they don't have an approach okay. what happened when they wanted to get rid of Obamacare did they have a replacement you're okay I understand Obama himself has said these things he said Obama says Obama was saying uh where is the replacement we've been waiting many years for the replacement there, there is no this replacement. is my this is one of my biggest problems with the Republican Party not just like they're all Trump dick suckers and they're too scared of like this loser to um like speak out against him right like that's not my only problem with them my other problem is they don't have solutions they don't actually have a platform besides we don't like democrats and we tri trigger the libs like that is what their platform is Sh sure sure I what plans do they have in the in this country to make things move forward right at least the democrats come up with something right which i can like i can get behind some of the stuff that they come up with i think is kind of stupid right like the universal believe... healthcare thing i've already said is really stupid like we need to like look at what does work in other countries right what sort what models of universal health care can actually achieve the goals of getting people health care but what do we do instead what do we do instead we try to like oh well we're going to uh you know we're gonna uh make this 10 trillion dollar uh thing over 10 years right and then we're going how are we going to fund it we're going to make rich people pay for it well what we're not going to be able to raise $10 trillion off of, you know, 0.1% of the population over 10 years. That's just never going to happen, right? We're going to have to find something that is cheaper, more cost effective, something that is more akin to what other countries do that they've modeled off of other countries that have had successful universal health care systems so that we can actually, you know, do something, right? That is an actually like a feasible goal, but the Democrats have an unfeasible um, plan on universal health care, right? But okay, they at well, least I, have I something really... that they want to do. Republicans, okay. they're just they they they're just uh, like nihilistic losers who think that we need to tear the entire system down instead of trying to work with what we have, fix the things that are broken, and you know improve the things that uh, are already working but could be better. That's what we should. That's the way that we should look at the world. If it's if it's broken, fix it. If it's not broken. Try to improve it to a, a better a, a level that's even better than what it's at now. That's what the the way that we should look at the world instead of like, oh well, I don't like the way that things are right now. We just need to burn the entire 
down and then like uh, i don't know what's going to happen next but it, it, at least it won't be this like things are like, what, like on my average pretty good yeah your world view is like ultimately nihilistic like you are actually the person that you you claim the rest of the country so, is. so i'm not a nazi i'm just a republican basically, no 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 i think that you're just no. like an incredibly like black pilled nihilistic um like homebody that doesn't get out and see what the actual opinions of regular people you don't see the joy that people have right i think that you're a really depressed sad person that needs to have joy in his life well yeah i'd like to th- i'd like to think about these political matters but uh so okay can you s- give me a summary of the whole monologue there i mean summary of the monologue is uh, we have no answers Republicans have no policy prescriptions, right? Because they're all nihilistic and they think that because uh, they start with the axiom, right, that government is bad and can't do anything good, that we just need to tear down the entire system. That's where the Republican Party is right now. Well, uh, man, the government, even the, even the Democrats think the government's bad in some regards. Yeah, the go- I'm not going to sit here and dick suck every single aspect of the government right there's things that need to be improved i've already given you like five or six I, I things think i think need to be republicans fixed don't, there's not a lot of republicans that say we need to tear the whole thing down is there uh, not, look mean, at what has happened over the past 30 days in in the congress or in the house of congress all right we've had um a a complete ousting of the speaker of the house because they didn't want to fund the government and then after that we had 20 straight days without a speaker of the house because the republicans were so dysfunctional that they couldn't pick one so we couldn't even pass any legislation because we didn't do, have a leader of the think, house do you ever think do you ever think this circles back to what i what I, my whole thing is my whole yeah, argument is the entire everything. country doesn't have that problem the republicans have that problem because they are like locked in a civil war between themselves as to whether they're going to sit there and dick ride trump until well, like the entire like disillusion of the united states come hell or high water or are they going to like actually come together as a unified body and like get shit done that's like the major civil war co- going down in the republican party right now and it's a you know i i could at least have some like admiration for the principles that some of these have and that they're not going to dick ride a like loser who has scammed the out of everyone his entire life right uh so that they can actually pass legislation at least some of them have some principles even if their policies are going to be retarded right or sociopathic towards like certain groups of people but at least they have like principles and they want to like get shit done right and then there's like uh Anyone that has your worldview that like uh, unless we uh, completely alter the system, unless we go completely isolationist, unless we go completely, you know, tear down the system and rebuild uh, in a moral, you know, more, you know, Christian, whatever the system that they want. I I know I'm saying their position Um, like, yeah, uh, like we're just going to tear the entire thing down and everyone and we'll let everyone starve to death we'll let uh soldiers go without pay we'll let everything just burn to the ground because people aren't agreeing with us like that's the way that the the current dysfunction in our yes, government is. yes well i mean that's that's how we, that's that's not how it is have- that's how the trump like chaos caucus as people have started calling them because they've like they're just nihilistic they you just want to tear think everything Democrats down are mad too when they don't get their way they're mad but they don't try and like bring the entire country down alongside them Okay, well, I we disagree that they're uh, trying to bring the whole country down. They, I mean, maybe they, they, they do act vindictive. This. They they're like they, they act- like they like actively state like we will we will sit here and we will let this country go into default. We will let this country people, go completely. People act. People act vindictive when they see this isn't vindictive. This is don't... sociopathic. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I don't know, Sansa. People could say it's sociopathic what they did with the uh, election midterms too. What they've been doing oh, so with they, the mail they didn't in, just, they didn't just like steal the election else. from Trump. They steal the, every election from out from now on with no evidence. Okay, Trump. You, I mean, or, I'm sorry, it's also, You could argue that it's it, the Democrats do things that are quite honestly sociopathic as hell all the time. Um, I, I, I would have like there's I, I don't know about all the time. I would but have but to see the, examples. Well, can I just say? Can I just say this circles all the way back around to like I've been saying? Why do why do people fight, Sonzel? Why does it, Sonzel, Do you agree that it takes two to tango? What do you mean? Do you, do, do, that's a very simple statement. It's a very simple statement. It takes two to tango, two to fight, two to right. Brawl. But who are the two groups? What what were, what's the what are you trying to get at here? 
So, so what I've been saying the whole time, the political system, it all goes back. I mean, you can spend I, all I, the time. I, I legitimately have no clue what you're trying to like get across you, you, to me right now. That's why I'm asking you. Like, who are the two very, groups? So it it's takes two very to tango. Simple. You, you know who the two groups are, okay? Like we've been just discussing now. Nihilists and, and the government? Yes. Well, I, I, I don't, don't understand. I, I, I don't legitimately. Think it's that simple, yeah, I don't understand what, what you're saying. About. I need you. No, I you, don't know. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You I don't know what you're talking about. Please thought. tell me. I'm asking you. Please, for the love of God, tell me. <laughs> I have no <laughs> clue. You're, you're, and I have very remember, little time left to, to remember, stream, so I need you to tell me. Remember when you said to remain calm and collective on your stream, and that person normally is a, doing the better in the debate? You need to calm We're down. We're not debating. So. We're having a conversation. I'm like, I'm like trying to rush through okay, this part sure, of the conversation sure. so I can just know sure, what you're sure, talking sure. about so we can talk. Okay, yes. I'm talking about the Republicans and the Democrats. Okay, obviously. it takes two to tango. Okay, and what is yes, the... Well, yes. Well, hold on. I would normally agree with you. All right. I would normally say it takes two to tango right now. It's not the Democrats that are causing this like dysfunction in government. Right. Normally, it would be the Democrats and the Republicans. Dude, but the right, Republicans are doing it because they're they are the, pissed. They're they're internally fighting. They're fighting amongst themselves. Well, they're, they're doing it because it's dude. If you it's like I come and shove you and then you come and shove me back and then I come and push your chest or something big f stupid fa i wouldn't push you very far because of your no offense your My, size a little bit but i think it's just you because you're a very small man okay yeah, okay that's very rude something. but then you come yeah, back oh you call me fat and i punch. say you're small and i'm the rude one <laughs> okay okay no, okay that's but yeah, i understand it's fine. It's fine. i know i understand what you're saying right but the problem okay. is right now it, it's not the democrats versus the republicans it's the republicans versus the republicans and I would even agree that there's like there is like legitimate Trump derangement no, syndrome in a lot of like Democrats to where they're like wholly unwilling to work with like anything. Right. But I think that that is like on such a much smaller scale than the Republicans right now fighting amongst themselves to where they can't even like decide on what kind of legislation they want to pass. They don't even want to like uh, agree on like what kinds of um, like like who should be our allies in the world, what sorts of things we should do on the world stage. What we... things the Democrats don't agree with each other on. As right. Well. But they I can mean... at least concede to each other and find common ground enough to like pass legislation, whereas the Republicans right now can't even find a leader okay well they and this has happened eventually, but. yeah and it, but here's the problem it never in american history has this ever happened before where where any party has been so dysfunctional this has happened right it happened uh before in we january dysfunction. no this is dysfunction this is the definition of dysfunction nothing is functioning in in our governmental system because the republican party can't agree on anything because, and okay, it so all comes down to like the brain rot of the Republican, like, like Trumple people. Okay, well, so they're in disagreement. I don't, I don't no, know. No, it's not uh, just disagreement. It's total obstinance. The Democrats eventually either find, uh, find common ground, right? Even when like the, the most dysfunctional the uh, Democratic Party has been in my lifetime has been with uh, Mansion and Cinema and being in the uh, Senate and like putting up roadblocks on like half of the legislation that Biden wanted to get through. But you know what? That legislation still went through because eventually we were able to work together and actually get something done. The Republican Party isn't even able to do that. Okay, right. What's and they your have complaint? More... They're just a divided party. They're and not just divided. Passing? There's people in there that are just there to completely throw a wrench in the entire political system. Yeah, maybe there should be people like that. No, there shouldn't, because then we actually have the world that you think we live in. Well, I know, I know, we live in the world I describe, but uh, you're you're uh, part well, of a very small group of people in the world, buddy. Most what, people are the most people can find bad? yeah, most people can find like some joy in life, and think that there's like things worth preserving in our country. Well, if there's not a if there's not any anybody to, uh, I don't know, contest the system or argue, I mean, I don't know. No, People you can contest the you can you can contest the system without completely throwing a wrench into like its operation. And I would agree with the fact that we should have people that contest the system, right? So, sometimes like, there have you been, can't just there have make been it work, though. Yes, you can. You can always uh, you can always reform. 
You can always uh, tweak things to work better. And then if things are just like completely not working, you completely overhaul them, right? But that doesn't mean you completely overhaul the entire governmental system. The, the, the fact that our government has been so stable for so long is a testament to like our governmental system being good, right? No, no, absolutely yes, not. Absolutely, no. yes. No. I, we totally disagree about that. It, it this no, is I, just I, like I, the no, history no, of the world, buddy. Even, like, no, don't even talk about that. That our country's gone on for this long, and these things have happened. So our political, our governmental system must be good. Our political system must. We work. have had the most absolutely stable government, like not. aside from like maybe like England and no. Besides maybe England and maybe a couple of other like smaller examples, we've had the most stable government in, I think, world history. There, there haven't been any like, uh, like military coups. There hasn't been like, um, we've had one civil war 150, like 200 years ago. Um, but that was like only four years long. We took that shit over real quick. Um, the good guys won yada yada and after that we haven't had any like major political strife in the united states like we've had the most stable government in like the entire world minus the british empire which collapsed and they like are a, a fraction of what they used to be i think in the past it was probably stable i think maybe it did work back then but today you can tell it's clearly got some problems even you're alluding to them but well, I, I mean, yeah, but that's because wrong. of people like you. Like, you guys are creating the world that you fear we live in. No, you guys, no, we think you guys have created it. Yeah, because you guys are brainworm addled crazy people. <laughs> like, okay, like, again, okay. like, Whatever, again, like, you, by any, by any metric economically, uh, by any metric, like, uh, by like quality of life things are like just relatively it's been stable stable, stable just and it's been growing stable in the past doesn't mean that it works or works well was that your claim then, then what does what it mean to what does it mean for it to work and work well uh it, what is your it, definition like, it, of it working it's producing results that are favorable for many generations at a time and it, it like is evolving and d things are changing for the better and things are getting better etc like uh, there like in all of in all of american history there's always been like uh like ebbs and flows of things being better and things being worse right like we can look at things like it's not like it was all peachy keen and then like uh it all went downhill like look at the gilded age you, in the you united states you genuinely believe okay so can i just finish this because I, I don't want to keep you if yeah because i, I didn't need to leave right? here in just a second but, but but so you genuinely believe that it actually you said it's working well you believe it genuinely works uh well i think that the institutions that we have work well and there are people that can throw wrenches no, into no, no, that no, no, right no, no. no i'm, I'm just... giving you my full take right like you're okay. i i do think that like in general our system works well as long as everyone abides by the same rules right as long as everyone agrees to work together which is the foundation that we uh, built the nation on right uh, uh, on democracy equality etc et wants cetera. to work together anymore nobody wants to well that's no... the problem right that is the only thing that can cause our nation to yes, fail but that that is created by the system no, 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 no. The system doesn't produce like people's attitudes. Are you really that naive? Yes, it does. How how Did does you the, think how does the system influence your beliefs on the world? The system you have sons, you have two parties. I'm not saying that the system that, doesn't require two parties. Uh, it basically it's does. No, it's produced two parties, but we've had three parties and four no, parties it, at one time in the past. It didn't produce two parties? Yes. Yes, it did. There is nothing. Okay. Go like, how about this? I will bet you a hundred dollars. All right. If you can find somewhere in our governmental system, somewhere in the constitution in the, in the declaration of independence and in any of the uh, forefathers writings that says we should have two parties, then I, I'll pay you a hundred dollars right now. You don't even have to pay me anything if you can't find it because I know I'm right. All right, there is okay, nothing might in not our specifically say two yeah. parties, but yeah, we uh, we have cre we have we have organized ourselves into that. But there's nothing that says that we can't have more than two parties at a time. Okay, well that would just never work. I mean, 
No, if I the think Uniparty that there's some would shut that down from the get-go. Do you understand that that's literally like borderline not feasible in today's world? To do what? We have forced these two parties, and they're here to stay. I mean, do you really expect some third party to rise up and the, it's going to be like all good? How, well, how no, no, no. We, we have to – there's like specific election laws at you, these – There are these hold on, now hold on, hold on. two no, forced parties answer. on us. No, no there's no forced say? parties. We all chose this. They okay? are forced, No, we, we no chose I this. never chose this, son. Okay, I well, never you were chose born this. after like the, the solidification of these two parties, right? But here's the here's the thing. The, the federal government literally doesn't have the power to – uh, to change how states run their elections. And at the state level, they have this thing called first past the post where you need a certain amount of like uh, the population like voting for you to even show up on the ballot or some shit like that. Right. I don't know like the specifics because it's a long time since I've talked about it. But like at the state level, okay, that's what okay. needs to be done. OK, great. So, you know, this is a no answer to the question whatsoever, really. Do, do you believe question? it actually works? Or yes, do you believe I believe the- it actually works. Okay, and so you, but you see what it produces, and you still believe it works. Uh, I think that over even the past four years, it's produced some of the most like wide ranging, like helpful legislation to the average American that okay, can I we've just seen say, in my can entire I just lifetime. Say, you, you, you I'll see you have all the final hatred. Word here, okay. Okay, no, it's just a question. I mean, you see all the hatred on Twitter for just an example out of anybody you can choose because you can choose large groups of all sorts of different people, the police or anybody really. But you see the hatred for, let's say, teachers like you. Okay, mm-hmm. on Twitter, you see. Do you see teacher hatred on yeah, Twitter? Yeah, the, the system. Yeah, the system. No, no, no just produce- yes or no. You're not. No, no, yes, no, no, I've no, seen that. I've seen that hatred. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. And then the last question. Just be direct with this one, and then we'll end the call. Just I need a one word answer or two, maybe. How? Where does that come from? Political system. Right, political system. Go ahead, Sanzel. Where the does the teacher hatred media. come from? Huh? The media. There's your two words. You genuinely believe that it comes from the media, and not the political system. If you can find me the political system, like uh, sowing division amongst people on who their like elementary school teachers do, are, then like please. You, you but really it's going to be political the... political people going on to media and telling everyone that they're groomers. It's going to be uh, political people going on to uh, different media places uh-huh. and and saying well, that. So what? What? Sounds so. so you really don't think this? Do you believe the two-party system sows division? Yes or no? Um, yeah, I do think that the two-party. I think that eventually we need to move towards having a parliamentary system. I think that that would be the optimal way for us to organize ourselves. You know, in your heart of hearts, this system isn't maintainable, right? It is maintainable. It's been maintainable for two hundred and fifty years. Okay, so what do you think? It's just going to go on forever? No. Okay. Huh. Jesus, man. But I think that there's going to be, there have to be like, uh, either we're going to have to keep going down this trajectory that we're going right now where people become completely disillusioned with all of society like you do. Um, like that's probably You're the biggest about threat. Some- uh, the, oh, well, no, no, no. a third party can rise up. You're no, it's not a, a delusion, it's not a ri- No, it's not a rise up situation. It is a there's a specific like set of laws that we need to enact at the state level that the federal government can't like legitimate like legitimately can't legally do by our own uh, constitution. The restrictions that we put on our government so they don't overreach, right, and stomp on the rights of the states or of individual citizens, right? They can't do it. We have to vote in people at our state level, right? That I mean, you talk a lot about the 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 federal level, but at the state level, we have to get rid of first past the post, and then we can have third parties run way easier, and people have more options. That's literally the the answer to your question. That is how we do it, right? But it requires you like actually caring about your local and your federal elections, or uh, your local and your state elections. Maybe I'm not sure that that would even do anything at all, but. Because the can I believe the candidates are uh, okay. I don't even want to discuss it, but okay, we'll we'll leave it there. Uh, yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate anyways. the call in. Like, I I I genuinely hope one day that you become less nihilistic. Maybe like it'll take uh like a a, a vision from God. Maybe it'll take a girlfriend. Maybe it'll just take. So the, so the Democrats are putting up pictures of themselves. They've allowed sixty to eighty million between that number of illegal aliens from Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and other places. They're creating fraudulent elections. They've got mail-ins and ballot draw boxes, etc. They're coming for your second. Okay, hold on. Right? Again, like I, I we said that we were going to end, and I'm not okay, going to like have time to like, go through over that. Okay, bye, buddy. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube or follow me on Kick and, uh, you know, 
We have the memberships on YouTube. We have the uh, the subscriptions on Kick. If you guys want to, you know, throw a couple of bucks my way, there are some uh, nice little treats for you. Uh, you know, different emotes and uh, different uh, AI things that the editor can do for you. All right. I'm really bad at promoing. I love you guys very much. We're